Welcome to Democracy 2.0 with myself, Malcolm Berman, and my uh, co-host, who is the expert on everything, Wayne Bouchard. Hey, Wayne, how's it going? Uh, I'm doing well, Malcolm. How are you today? Uh, not bad, but I'm happy to see that uh, we, we were, uh, I was worried about you a little bit because uh, earlier in the week, uh, you told me you had COVID. Yes. Um... <laughs> You know, this is the second time I've contracted this uh, this um, this virus in in three months, and wow. um, you know, I've had two uh, two vaccinations and a booster, which was actually a full vaccination because at the time Moderna didn't have a booster that was approved by the F FDA, so. I got a full 100 milligram shot again for the third time. Uh, I got uh, COVID during the um, uh, Christmas, New Year's break. And my doctor sent me in for the monoclonal uh, antibodies. And um, I got it again. And this time, this time it was, um, this time was, I went to a funeral of a, of a very good friend of ours, and uh, two of the uh, two of her sisters had tested positive for COVID, and they didn't go to the funeral. Uh, you know, the, none of the they didn't go to the funeral mass. They didn't go to the repast or anything. They but they were at the house, and you know, interacting with all the people, uh, all the family members, and then all the fam all the other family members came to the, to the uh, church services, and then the, the, the repass afterwards. With no masks? <clears throat> Pardon? No masks were worn? No, no masks. Now, did you think that, are, are you uh, immune deficient? Do you feel that you have, uh, that you, you catch things uh, quickly? Uh, more prone to uh, you know other type of colds and coughs. Not really. You know, I felt like with with all the vaccinations and the and the monoclonal antibodies, I was kind of bulletproof. Yeah. Uh, but there were um, seven or eight people at our our table at the um, at the repass, and uh, and I think six of them got sick. Well, and and then a lot more of the other people got sick as well, no, but, including I, I, including I, I, our friend who we went there to uh, support in her time of uh, grief because it was her mom that died. Is it uh, what were the symptoms? I mean, they severe or mild or like a cold or a flu? I would say like a like the flu. Excuse me, I'm going to have to. I'm now I'm going to okay. cough. <clears throat> Uh, you probably can cut that part out. Yeah, no, I, I want I, I want to get you with all your 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 you know pimples and warts. Oh, uh, okay. Um, you know, very very tired, run down, no energy, uh, cough, uh, a little bit of a fever. Um, what else? What were some of the other symptoms? Um, but then, no, no, no problems breathing. No problems breathing. I, you know, check my blood oxygen all the time. Um, I, as I said, a little bit of a temperature, you know, a couple of times it went above 98.6, never got above a hundred. <clears throat> so. Um, okay. Hopefully and this too shall pass. Yeah. I feel better now. However, my wife has still got a, a horrific cough. Uh, and she does not feel that much better. Yeah. And she tested positive the day before I did. I wasn't even feeling bad. And on set last Saturday, and then she took the test and tested positive. <clears throat> and then I woke up Sunday and didn't feel very good and took the test and tested positive. But so you could have gotten it from her versus from the, uh, you know, from the theory they went. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you could go around and around on that one. You try to figure this out, you go crazy. 
Yeah, they um, there were no, there are no mask mandates. They've been lifted in the state of New Jersey. Right. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't wear masks. That means they've been lifted. Correct. Correct. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I get uh, I mean, with so many variants. I was talking to my other show. Uh, here, I don't know if you listen to Sid Malcolm, Sid Mandelbaum. And uh, we were talking about it, and he, he feels that some people have natural immunities. To, uh, I'm sure that's true to a certain extent. Yeah. But uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I you know, I, I, I think that that uh, this is caused well be, being political is caused by a lot of people who do not take care of themselves, who do not be vaccinated, and. Uh, uh, Viruses are very, uh, uh, you know, strong. I mean, they want to survive. And, you know, once you have a, something, uh, a, a vaccine for one, they form a variant. So now we have like every time I open the newspaper, there's some other variant that we're, uh, uh, you know, that, that's building up in China or in London or some other parts of the world. And it's a small world. I mean, at one time, if there was something in London or or China or Africa would never reach us. Now you know, right. we constantly have, you know, communications. You know, uh, planes going to you know all the different countries. Mm -hmm. So you know, th th there's nothing that's uh, you know uh, far away mm -hmm. or or out of the realm. As I say, it, I mean, the one thing it teaches us is that it's one world, and we better act as one. And you know, I, I think you have to ask yourself the question. <laughs> You know, who's going to win, us or the virus? I think eventually it's going to be the virus. I think so, too. Sad and, to say. And, and, and I, I've seen the movies. I mean, if you go to Hollywood, there are constantly movies about viruses or different diseases. Yes, yes. And, and, and generally, it's like open-ended. You know, th 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 there's, there's no answer. You know, again, we just have to, you know, keep uh, uh, vigilant. And of course, it's, you know, the, the whole damn thing has become so political about uh, whether you take the vaccine or whether you don't take the vaccine or what's happening. It's sort of like, a, you know, people think, oh, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the you know, uh, QAnon people think, oh, that we're trying to, you know, the, the vaccine people are trying to control you. Yeah, you know, they're telling you what to do uh, by getting vaccines or by uh, not wear uh, by wearing masks. It's all a matter of controlling the populace, which I think is all bull. Well, in the final analysis, I think they can they can pretty much tell that uh, the states that uh, had the majority of the vaccinations and had mask mandates and followed them. Uh, fewer people got sick, fewer people were hospitalized, and there were fewer deaths. Well, the problem oh. is, you, you know, but, as we were talking it, about the, the other week, you listen to the different newscasts, and there are really no objective facts, or that the, they say. You, you, you listen to the liberal press, they're one thing. You listen to the uh, conservative press, uh, uh, it, it's another conclusions. And as a matter, of, and I, you know, I'm pretty much, you know, know the facts, but I get confused. I don't know what is real and what is not real, what is being promoted, what is, uh, you know, uh, it's not that important. It, it's confusing out there. Well, the, the other side just, you know, co continuously says, you know, it's false news, fake news. Well, they, yeah, I mean, the Republicans, no matter what we say, is fake news, right. and what we say, being a Democrat, and uh, uh, the Democrats say it's the opposite way. And yeah, well, I'm not, uh, I'm not a member of any organized political party. I'm a yeah, Democrat. Well, well I'm, I'm Bill sort of, Rogers said that. I, I, I stole that. I'm, I'm sort of anti all parties now. As I as I grow older, I, I don't know if I mentioned on this show, or one of my other shows, but I'm not a Democrat, not a Republican, not an independent. I'd like to think of myself as an independent thinker. Because there's so many things that both parties do 
that I disagree with. Uh, well, it, it's sort of like once you're elected, if you're a member of a Democrat or Republican, you become a, a lemming. Uh, you know, you just go go into lockstep. You go into lockstep with the Republicans, or you go to lockstep with the Democrats. You, you're not an individual thinker anymore. Well, j- just to uh, kind of uh, get off this COVID thing, uh, I, I just like to end with. I thought it was kind of interesting that our governor, Governor um, Murphy, is balancing the uh, 2023 budget, I believe, with the three billion dollar surplus he has in COVID funds. Mm. That's an interesting use of uh, the COVID funds. And one of the things that struck me, and and it, and it might have been uh, might have been because of of something that I heard was. Um, if you wear a uh, a flag lapel pin, yeah, does that make you more patriotic than me? If I don't wear one, it it, dep- it depends on which flag you uh, you're floating. Well, I, I'm talking about the American. I know. I'm talking uh, about the American flag. I think that um, I think it's interesting that we have a flag stored right down on the corner from where we live, and they're selling Ukrainian flags. Yeah, that, that, that's the flag of choice uh, in the last few months. There was a uh, song written by uh, John Prine that uh, posed the question, you know, uh, does your flag pin get you into heaven? Well, uh, I so, don't know. Well, you come up with an answer. I, I, I'm wondering, you know, how we measure... Uh, a person's patriotism. Well, well that, that uh, goes into a, a broader question, which I have, which made me uh, think of when you said that. If uh, uh, Kaepernick knelt down during the uh, national anthem, is he less patriotic than people who stand up? I mean, if he is protesting a certain group, a certain thing, does that make him less pat- patriotic or less American? Interesting question. You know, my, my opinion is no. Uh, I think he, he uh, raised the consciousness of a lot of people. I think, that, I mean, to me, that, that whole awareness like that started, uh, I forget it was the 62 Olympics with the three uh, the runners who got up on the stand and did a black power salute. Yeah. Did that make him less patriotic? Or, or- uh, no. Or, or, or were they saying, this is my country, I want to make it better? No, this, this is, um, yeah, this is our land. Yeah, or, or uh, in 68, I protested the war in Vietnam. I was anti-war. Does that mean I wanted us to lose or I, I wasn't a, a, a proper American? No, I think we were doing the wrong thing. And that was my American way of protesting, which was... Right which is what we fought for. You have a constitutional right to uh, protest. But as they say, uh, I too, I too protested the war in 1968. Uh, My only regret is that I don't think that we were, I don't think that we were aware of the impact that that was having on the soldiers that were coming back. The soldiers that were incredibly impacted by the, uh, you know, the brutality of that war. And, and, you know, I don't know about you, but I have some, and continue to have some very dear friends that are still suffering from the effects of uh, Vietnam. Oh, oh yeah, as, as far as the war, I, I, I think those effects, it's, it's not, uh, 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 re- necessarily related to Vietnam and, and our political pa- uh, policy. I think it's related to wars in general. I think we still have the, you know, the PTSD from, from all the wars, because I cannot imagine going, number one, me killing, going around with, uh, you know, k- killing even the enemies and, or people around me being killed. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, seeing all that blood and guts and kids being killed and families being killed, uh, I, I, I don't see how you can recover from that. 
But but the thing is, I, I have I have a one of my other shows is called uh, 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 Commander Pat Alicia, and he is one of the uh, commanders for the American Legion. And basically, we've uh, you know I've spoken to uh, Vietnam uh, uh, soldiers coming back, mm. and the thing was that a lot of the protesters, and, and I think mistakenly, you know, when the Vietnam soldiers came back, they were blaming them for the war. Correct. Correct. They, they, they were, uh, you know, villainizing them, uh, demeaning them, when the truth is, or from what I understand, the truth is they came back, they were soldiers. The government told them what to do, and they did it. Uh, you know, and, and uh, it's it's not as egregious as you know. I was thinking about you know the German soldiers. I just did what I was ordered, but it was there, there was so many subterfuge that you didn't know what was happening, and and, and we deified them versus uh, you know uh, welcoming them back and treating their symptoms. Correct, correct. That's my one regret. Yeah, about uh, all the activities that we. Um that we engaged in uh, as a result of Vietnam, but let's, right. <clears throat> how about, uh, how about the, the, the uh, war that's being waged today in Ukraine? Um, first of all, you know, hats off to the Ukrainians. They, they are, you know, a very, very uh, gutsy people to stand up to the Russians the, the way they have. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know about you, but, uh, you know, seeing that uh, warship sunk by two uh, Ukrainian missiles uh, just really, uh, you know, was was a phenomenal feat. Right. But the thing the thing that I worry about, I don't know if you've heard the news today, that they think that the uh, uh, that warship had been uh, nuclear armed and that the two nuclear missiles that are now, you know, uh, sunk into the ocean. Ah, so they have to. Somebody has to go recover those. Missiles. Someone has to recover them because you don't know what would happen. But who's, who's really uh, shown during this whole thing is Zelensky. Yeah, I, an I mean, unlikely hero. Yeah, I, I mean, beginning he was a joke. I don't know if you remember when he was elected. Yes, yes, he never had, absolutely. He, he, he never had. He, he didn't have any political experience. Right. He was a comedian. And, and he had a pop TV show where he was a comedian that was elected president. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it became reality. So it's a reality show. So he's kind of like Donald Trump. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I, don't I, I, I hate to think that Donald Trump is real. I think that one day I wake up and it'll be a figment in my imagination. And the whole, period nice. didn't, the whole period didn't happen. Wouldn't that be nice? Zelensky warned today that he thought that um, Putin might use tactical nuclear weapons, as did the uh, CIA director. That's kind of scary. That's kind. Of, it's very scary because again, I don't tactical, know. Where it doesn't make any di difference whether they're tactical nuclear weapons or long-range nuclear weapons. They're still nuclear weapons. But but that that doesn't even make any sense for uh, Putin because. Russia is so close to Ukraine that anything, any you know, nuclear waste or nuclear uh, uh, poisoning would go right into Russia, to his people. Uh, I don't think he really cares about that. Yeah, you know, well, I don't know if he really cares, but uh, the, the, the Russian people should, because he'll poison his own country. I mean, uh, I can think if you say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to nuke uh, the United States. At least we're a little farther away, even though, you know, a good uh, a wind blows all that nuclear waste here, uh, there from here. But at least, you know, the, it, 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 it's something he could say. But to nuke uh, Ukraine, which is right next to, next door to his country. But it's a tactical nuclear weapon. I don't I don't know if the tactical nuclear What the hell's weapon. the difference? Uh, I, I but as, as we've seen with uh, um, the power plant, uh, yeah, like Chernobyl, disasters, you know, it it, it all comes, it, it goes around the globe. The, the wind blows. I know that we had 
uh, uh, last winter, we had these major fires, massive fires in California. Mm -hmm. That smoke was reaching New York. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and in fact, the smoke from the fires didn't reach me in Southern California. Fires were in Northern California. Didn't reach me. But my friends in New York were complaining. I, I did. I wanted to talk to you about that. You know, keep those keep those bloody fires over there to yourself. Well, you have to get to all the, uh, you know, the Petro companies and uh, uh, stop them, you know, get, let's get some alternative energy because this is getting more and more frightening. The more, the more and more I read or listen to, the more and more that reports are coming out. The UN, I think was beginning of this week or last week, had that report that the, you know, time is a wasting. Mm -hmm. Soon we're going to be at the point, the, uh, the point of no return. And before will we, we make um, up, will we destroy our own planet? Or we are destroying our. We own are destroying planet. it, but can can we rectify it? I know that. You know, look at the the, the weather report. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to do the temperature. You know, because they're going oh, because okay, even to me uh, they say if it, the weather goes up one point five centigrades, I say it's a big deal. Wasn't that um, wasn't uh, part of the Build Back America plan uh, that uh, was scuttled by Senator uh, Senator Manchkin? Oh, Manchin, yeah, yeah, Manchin. I call him Munchkin, Manchkin. Senator Munchkin. W w didn't that bill contain a lot of um, incentives and, and uh, programs for alternate fuels? Yeah, climate change. Yeah, except. Now I have a question for you as a politician. How yes. come he did, how come he did, didn't recuse himself? How come he, he could still be allowed to vote on it when his major source of income is uh, fossil fuel? It's coal. There, there's nothing that there's, there's nothing that prevents uh, congressmen or senators from from voting on things that impact their state. As a matter of fact, that's why they, isn't that why they're elected? They're elected to protect the interest of the people of their state. Well, first of all, it's not the state I'm thinking of. He owns a company that is, uh, produces fossil fuel. He, uh, but the major industry in West Virginia is coal. Right, but the thing coal is, production. but who are, it's the big companies own the coal. Right now, if they would go to uh, full throttle to dig the coal out of the ground, they wouldn't be using miners anymore. They would be minor. The, the, my, the miners would be minor. It would be robots, machines. Right. So in, right, in, but it's a lose-lose situation. The, the heart of the issue, the heart of the issue of all politicians, <clears throat> in, in the federal government anyway, the heart of the issue is the Supreme Court decision, Citizens United, that made... Right corporations that allowed corporations to donate to political campaigns and it's totally corrupted our entire political system totally well it, it, it's unlimited it's it's unlimited do you know how much i mean the the billions and billions of dollars we spend on political campaigns is is criminal yeah uh the, the money could be go, going to better use <laughs> We have people going to we have people that go to bed hungry in this country and we spend hundreds of billions of dollars on a political campaign to get someone elected to Congress for a, that, that's the salary is one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. That's wait, wait a minute. You don't have to be uh, a rocket scientist to figure out something's wrong here. And how do these people end up being worth tens of millions of dollars at the end of their term, you know, whatever it happens to be. You, you, Hundreds you, of millions of dollars. You, you tell me, because I'd like to do, invest my money the way they invest their money. Well, first of all, they get uh, they get uh, information about certain companies ahead of time. Now they, can, they can't use that, quote unquote, insider they information. That. They do use that. And they invest, and they invest in those holdings, and and uh, then they make make additional monies. Yeah, but, but, but the, by the way, system is corrupt, and how do we straighten it out?
Right, and this has nothing to do with uh, your affiliation. Both sides are doing it. No. Both. It, it, it absolutely has nothing to do with whether you're a Democrat, a Republican, an independent, or a... Uh, well, well that, that's why we have to left. have a, uh, another system of government. And I'm not another system, but uh, democracy has to be tweaked. The, well, the, that, that ruling has to be reversed. Oh, definitely. In order for the system to even, to even have half a chance of survival. Well, they, they also, you know, even if they gave money, what, uh, you know, I'm pretty much aware of uh, politics and who does what to where, but they have, when they donate to the parties, you see at the end, this is, uh, they have this name of, uh, you know, who, who gave the money, this is the finance by, and you cannot tell what they stand for. You know, United Democrats for United People for a Fair Society. You don't know who the hell they are. You mm -hmm. know, have to go find out who controls that. Who's who, you know who's the CEO of that uh, a group? It's almost impossible to to, to trace all this information. Right, and uh, and and then what's funny? I don't know if uh, you know. Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, amendments to our uh, you know state constitution. A lot of. Uh, you know, during the, uh, you know, during the election. And you cannot tell what the hell that amendment or, or uh, is by reading it. Because it's so convoluted. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> we have those same thing. Questions on the ballot? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, a, a page and a half of legal mumbo jumbo that says, you know, that you can, uh, you can go smoke a joint on, on Friday night and not get arrested. Yeah, no, only if they just say that. Only if you're Jewish. Ah, it, it, and it's it, the third it, Thursday it, it, of the month. It, it, it's a religious ritual. Uh -huh. but it, it's uh -huh. a things that it's it's funny. I mean, when you uh, I mean, like the computer, and, and you you know, or, or you want to do something which is standard, and you have to sign a contract, almost that's like ten pages long, or your credit cards when you get. That's another. Have you ever read what you agreed to when you signed for your credit card? No, no. I, I had a case. No Go ahead. My, my brother was a, uh, uh, he is, no, well, he's retired now. He's a class action attorney. Uh -huh. and, this, and this is going back to the 70s. And he had a, the New York State and he had a case against, I think, a Bank of America or one of the credit card companies. And I, you know, they have, I was a plaintiff. So I had to give a, a deposition. So, you know, this is in this big room with both attorneys. My brother was the only one for him, him and another colleague. The rest had like about 17 attorneys. And so the guy asked me, they said, well, didn't you understand that you, he said, did you read, you know, the, the contract that you signed? I said, yes. He said, don't you know what that meant? And I said, no. He said, why did you sign it? Because I couldn't get the uh, credit card, if not. He said, but don't you know this means that and that? I said, this is what we're here to decide. I have a group of lawyers. They don't know what the answer is. How should I know? But it's so, it all depends who's in power, how it's interpreted. Well, let, <clears throat> let's, uh, we're almost done. So let's switch gears. What do you think about uh, Elon Musk uh, buying Twitter? I couldn't care less. You couldn't care less. Okay. I, I, I think it's a man playing with his money. And he, he's, he's looking for some sort of advantage. It, it's, well, no matter who owns it, it matters of how they're regulated. They're not regulated. I know. That's where they have to be. Freedom of speech. Oh, uh, There's no freedom of speech. <laughs> I cannot go to a movie, yell fire, you know, the traditional thing. I cannot go uh, in the street and say, uh, we want to kill so-and-so, uh, except if you're uh, Trump. But uh, there's really no freedom of speech. Everything is regulated. And I think it's a misnomer to say, oh, we have freedom of speech. No, we don't. Well, I, I liked Musk's interpretation of what freedom of speech is. Freedom of speech is 
when somebody I don't like says something that I don't like and they can they can get away with it, then there's freedom of speech. So when Donald Trump says something that I don't like, then there's freedom of speech. Well, yeah, but can, can Donald Trump like create his own facts? Which yes, is, of course he has. Done. <laughs> he has. I think it's interesting that um, today all those new texts came out from uh, senators, uh, Senator Mike Lee and uh, Representative uh, Roy from Texas uh, to to Mark Meadows yeah. on, on uh, the uh, January sixth uh, insurrection insurrection and how to uh, change the outcome of the election and how those guys. Back down. Well, do, do you realize that if the Republicans take over the uh, the House midterm election, there ain't going to be no more investigation? Absolutely not. There's, Absolutely. You know what the investigation is going to be? The investigation is going to be Hillary and the lost uh, uh, emails. It's going to be Hunter Biden and and Joe Biden and their connection right. to uh, right. Right. China and uh, we'll, Ukraine. We'll have a whole. We'll have we'll be on the other side of the fence. Yeah, it's uh, that's why I'm I'm in a way I'm fed up with politics, but you can't be because it controls us. What's the outcome going to be? Uh, of the elections or of uh, well, you know, the, the, the outcome is going to be is we're going to make the earth so uninhabitable, and that there's going to be so much chaos. That it really doesn't make a difference, and and uh, you know if we don't if we don't change our way of living by I think it's twenty fifty, we'll either uh, you know have to abandon the earth, or uh, it's not going to be fit for uh, human inhabitants. It will be you know certain animals, certain viruses, bacteria, but for humanity, no. Unless we decide that we want to live underground, where we'll build a whole. Uh, 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 underground society. I, I think there are science fiction shows like that. Oh, absolutely. There's Wait, where you can't you can't come up from the underground, and hmm. uh, because the, the Earth is to be totally uh, uninhabitable for human consumption, for human people, for non-human people, for people. But anyway, well, now that we stirred up a lot of uh, ifs, ands, and buts, with of course no conclusion, because there ain't no conclusion. It's the end of our show. Let's, well, well, let's see what happens next week. What what we uh, can, can toss around, or what 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 hap- what's what happens that totally outrages us. I'm sure that it will be something that will be unrelated to um, anything that we're thinking about right now. So we we can all be uh, we can hold surprised it. by what it what it happens. In, in, in the meantime. Uh, happy Passover, even if you're not Jewish. Uh, yes. Happy Easter. I don't know whether people have happy Ra- Ra- Ramadans. I don't know how they say that. Oh, okay. And uh, take care of yourself because the most important thing is health. Like my mother, like my mother used to say, no matter how much money you have, the most important thing thing is health. So take Correct. care. Correct. Drink, because- drink, hot, drink hot liquids. Rest. Take care of Meg. She's a good person. We'll do that. All right, Malcolm. You enjoy the holiday. Take care. Bye. Bye.